gives a guy a good feeling inside to be able to help the grunts out of a tight spot like that. That's the job of an aerial observer. Somehow the importance of that job is just beginning to come into sharp focus. And this is my last mission. Tomorrow I'm heading stateside. But I'm starting to have second thoughts. I want to stay. I must be crazy. I keep thinking back to another day, a year ago, when I first arrived in Vietnam. How long ago that seems. I was going to be an aerial observer, the eyes in the sky for a Marine division. Our mission? To fly over enemy territory and spot the BC. In training, they told me an AO needs two things, an eagle eye and a bulletproof bottom. All I had was an eagle eye. No one ever forgets their first mission. We were to fly our chopper over a certain area ahead of a search and clear sweep. I don't mind telling you, when that chopper took off, I had chills in the old spine, and it wasn't cold in the bird. Sometimes we flew so close to the trees, we must have scared the monkeys. Other times we flew at 1,200 feet. And then I felt like the biggest flying bullseye in Vietnam. But the pilot knew what he was doing, and soon we were over our assigned territory looking for Charlie. He's not easy to find, unless you know what you're looking for. For example, if you see a herd of cows and one farmer, that's okay. But if that herd should have 10 or 12 farmers, you're looking at a VC crowd. Along the roads, a man on a bicycle might be a peasant. Or he also might be a VC on his way to his troops. Come on down for a closer look. They'll be picking up pieces of helicopter in five provinces. I'm trying to remember everything I've learned. Scanning the Viet countryside and mentally preparing myself for machine gun fire from that massive jungle. And what happens? Nothing. We finish our mission and turn back. I'm a little let down. Is this what the real war is like? I've seen more action than this on the TV news shows every night. Back at the base, I find out the real scoop. The more experienced AOs tell me that 90% of my missions will be this way. The job that some people think is the most dangerous in the world, flying in a lightly armed plane over enemy territory, is just plain boring most of the time. Oh yes, they tell you. It can get exciting once in a while. Like when they blow your chopper up in midair, or put a 50 caliber shell through you. Outside of that, it's boring. Those combat veterans really like to give the rookies a business. The funny thing is, I, I found out they weren't kidding, at least about the boring routine. I flew 12 missions without seeing one VC. I flew visual reconnaissance missions, scanning the area ahead of our troops. I went on photo reconnaissance missions, photographing areas where Charlie was suspected. I flew bridge and road reconnaissance missions to analyze their suitability for tactical movement of troops and vehicles. I flew in support of combat operations sweeps through the countryside to flesh out the VC and his supplies. And until then, as the boys said, it was routine. Until that 13th mission, lucky 13. We were flying an OV-10 Bronco on a visual reconnaissance mission. We climbed over a mountain following a road into the valley, and I spotted a flash of light. It looked to me like the reflection of the sun off binoculars. So I told the pilot, let's go in for a look. And that whole forest opened up. I got on the radio right away to give artillery the coordinates while the pilot was dipsy doing away from the gunfire. He didn't quite make it. Bullets ripped through the plane. All of a sudden, I told as if someone had kicked me in the shin. I looked down at my leg, and to my surprise, I saw blood. And my left arm was also bleeding. I hadn't even felt the hit in the arm. In that situation, I was worrying so hard I didn't even feel. We made it out of there. 
Our big guns started booming on the target we'd given them. We must have paid Charlie back pretty good because I know we stumbled on a swarm of them. My wounds were superficial, as the doctors would say, but at least I now had the respect of the veterans. Somehow, none of my missions after that seemed boring, even when nothing happened. I got better at finding those elusive BC, and we scored some pretty good successes in my next missions. I grew to respect my fellow AOs more and more. The thing is, all of us know how important our job is to the troops. Time and again, we would spot BC concentrations in time to forestall an ambush, then save a truck convoy or a platoon or even a regiment on the march. And now for me, it's about over, my last mission. And the odds are that it will be routine. That's what I predicted to myself. But I'm the guy who bet against the Mets in the pennant race. It's a beautiful day and kind of hard to think of war as we fly over the peaceful looking countryside. But we are heading for the vicinity of the DMZ. We know the BC are there all right, but try to find them. Around here, Charlie has been active digging tunnels. The word is they are edging closer to a base camp. How close are they? On this day, the commander is sending out a patrol to find out. Our job is to aid that patrol. While they searched on the ground, we would be scanning from the sky. I don't envy those guys down there. Intelligence tells us there are 20,000 BC in the area, and they might stumble into a whole battalion of them on this patrol. From up here, unfortunately, we can't see a thing but jungle. There's VC or experts at camouflage. But they're there, all right. Down below us, machine gun fire erupted. That squad was in real trouble. I alerted Desk to stand by for an airstrike, but they can't come in until our patrol is disengaged. We fired a smoke rocket down there and made strafing passes over the BC trying to divert their attention. There's all we could do. We don't carry the big stuff. Maybe it helped a little. We could see the squad was handling itself well, falling back slowly and holding off the VC. We swooped over the VC again, machine guns flashed like sparks, and we were hit, but bad. When the gunfire ended, my pilot was slumped over the controls, and the plane started to die. An AO is not a pilot. I had never flown a plane in my life. And there I was, wrestling like a maniac with these controls, with the weight of the pilot on the forward controls fighting against me. That ground kept coming closer all the time. Man, you have strength when death stares you in the face. I don't know how I pulled that plane out of its dive, but I did. Now I have a flying machine under me, and somehow I have to get it down and on the ground in one piece. Those F-4s are really giving the VC a pounding. But at this point, I didn't think I'd ever read about it in the newspapers. Benang Tower, this is Hostage Kane declaring an emergency. I'm inbound with two aircraft. The pilot of the lead aircraft is wounded and unconscious, and the arrow in the backseat is flying the aircraft. I will be talking him in on Fox Mike. Request a straight in to runway 35. Hostage King, this is Denang Tower. Understand, AO of lead aircraft is flying from back seat. Requesting straight in runway 35. We'll have crash crews standing by. Report five miles straight in runway 35. I didn't know I was making history, at least in the AOs. I'll bet from this day on, every AO will pay more than casual attention to these pilot controls, just in case. But I had to be the guinea pig. I'm coming up on your right side. OK, you're looking good. Oh, that other pilot reassured me. The control tower, too. Now, put the two small levers on the throttle all the way forward. Now, you can forget those, and we'll just use the big ones. They coached me on how to level off and fly a straight line. But I'm not as dumb as I look. Anyone can fly a straight line, but what about that landing? Well, one mistake can bury you six feet deep under the runway. I'll bet everyone within 10 miles has turned out to witness the funeral. And the funny thing is, by then I was beginning to feel cocky. There's something about flying that brings out the spirit in man. You get to feel like God up there. 
the cockier I got, the more worried my friends became. By now, I was determined I was going to land this plane. Okay, it's time to dirty up. Pull the power back. Now, put the gear handle down. It wasn't until halfway into the landing that I got scared again. And by then, it was too late. Lift the nose a little. Okay, now fly right down to the deck. I didn't kiss the ground after I got out of the plane. That would be too corny. But I did hug those AOs who crowded around me. I was sure glad to be back with people again. These guys would be flying into the teeth of the enemy again tomorrow. I would be on my way to the States. But somehow I knew I would be back, as I know this job has to be finished. Pacific, the sun is just breaking over the China Sea. Another day is beginning in Southeast Asia as the warm, humid night slowly turns into a hot, humid day. If it were a different time and a different day, this quiet early morning countryside would be a thing of beauty. But it is today, another day of war in Vietnam. And to think I could have had the swing shift this week. So what's better, sleeping during a stinking hot night and working during a stinking hot day or vice versa? Answer, a cold shower. At the air bases, the long night's work is all but finished. Tired men 